It has often been said that the difference between success and failure is just not giving up. At some point in your life, you're going to be faced with a decision of giving up on your dreams. If you have a dream, at some point you'll be faced with that decision. There's a story I, I like to hold to every time that I feel the need to want to give up. There was a guy who wanted to be a miner. He, he wasn't a miner by trade, but he wanted to be a miner. This is back in the 1920s. He decided, I'm going to sell everything that I have. I'm going to go borrow all the money I can from all my family and my friends. And he, and he went and did all these things. He bought a mine. He went out there and he mined, and he mined, and he mined. Several years went by of mining, and he found himself at a place of despair. He wasn't making any money. He wasn't getting any gold. The gold wasn't enough of a return to pay for the investment for his family members and what he had invested. He decided that, I can't do this any longer. He was at his wit's end. He decided, I'm going to go and sell the mine. He found a guy who wasn't a miner. He sold the mine to a guy who knew nothing about mining. The guy he sold it to him decided, I'm going to hire an engineer. He hired an engineer. An engineer came out there to him. He did a survey on the mine. And they found that he was three feet from one of the largest gold strikes in history. He gave up three feet from gold. He gave up three feet from, that, from, the, from his dream. At some point in your life, you're going to be faced with the same decision of giving up. I remember waking up early one morning, sitting on the side of my bed. Tears were running down my face. I was broken inside. I was hurt so bad. My business was in such a struggle. I'd never seen the kind of struggle my business was in at that time. I didn't know what I was going to do. The pain was enormous. If, I always tell people, if you want to learn to live by faith, start a business. You'll learn to live by faith. But I sat there crying. And I remember I said a prayer that morning as the tears flowed down my face. And I said, God, you must totally hate me. And I said it three times. And that's all I said. That was the only prayer I could get out. I was beat. I was broken. I got rid of my pity party, went to work. Sat there in the office. Now I'm back to my happy-go-lucky self. I'm just the normal me that I always am. So I'm happy, good to go. We're sitting in the office, 10 o'clock in the morning. The phone rings. My son answers the phone. He's on the other side of the office. And the guy says, hey, uh, is Eric Rios here? Can I talk to him? And of course, my son's screening my calls. He says, no, no, he's not available right now. <laughs> and the guy goes, well, can you just tell him that God told me to call him? So my son's sitting there with total curiosity going on. He's like, let me just put you in a hole for a second. He goes, dead, dead, dead. There's some crazy guy on the phone who said God told him to call you. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, we've had a lot of crazy people call our office. But this is probably going to be the craziest. I've got to talk to this guy no matter what. I'm a skeptic. Now, the morning had gone away. That's all gone. Now I'm back to where I'm feeling powerful, feeling you're happy. I get on the phone with the guy. I said, uh, thank you for calling this, Eric. How can I help you? And the guy says, you don't know me, and I don't know you. I'm 65 years old. I have nothing to lose from this conversation with you. He said, God told me to call you. I said, okay, I'll entertain what you have to say. I'm a skeptic. I'll listen to what you have to say. He said, I'm thinking this dude's crazy is what I'm thinking. The guy goes, look. I said, no, no, hold on a second. Hold on a second. First of all, how did you get my name? How do you even know who I am? How did you get my number? He goes, you know what? It's good that you asked that. He said, I'm sitting here and I'm praying. He said, and there's a phone book sitting in front of me. God said, pick up the phone book. And I want you to open it. And I want you to put your finger, just put your finger down. And wherever you put your finger, that's who I want you to call. So I'm listening. You know, he's guy still, he's crazy, a little crazy. He said, I opened the phone book and I put my finger down on your face, which had your phone number on it. He said, God told me to call you. Now the guy's got my attention. The tears begin to run down my face. The brokenness begin to come back. 
I didn't want to face that pain. He said, God wanted me to tell you this. Everything's going to work out okay. Just trust in what I'm going to do in your life. You see, that day, I needed some hope. I needed a lot of hope. I was so broken. I was so down. I was at the point of, am I going to close my business? I mean, just things were just going south. If you've never owned a business, the feeling is something like you've never imagined, that pressure that you constantly feel. But at some point in your own life, you're going to be faced with a decision to give up on your dreams. Every single one of you have a dream. Every one of you do. And you're going to be faced with, with this decision of just saying, I'm going to throw in the towel. I'm going to give up. But God didn't give you a dream to give up on. He gave you a dream so you could have a purpose, so you could fight for something. And when you get down so far down, you've got to dig a little deeper. You've got to find a way when you can't see a way. You've got to open yourself up to new things and new ideas. And you can't give up. Because remember this. And don't ever forget what I'm going to tell you. The day you decide to give up on your dream is the day that you just might be three feet from gold.